Hi, good, uh, good day, I'm Dr. Herman, and today I'm gonna share with you about how dental infections and toxins in the teeth and in the gums and in the jaw can actually be related to disease in your body, whether it's your thyroid, your heart, your nervous system, any organ, the bone marrow, all of these can have infection and toxin coming from the teeth. So that's what we're gonna to share today. So uh, this video should just take a few minutes and just uh, do your best to listen in and I'm gonna share with you some different information that you just really haven't heard before. In most cases, you haven't heard this before. Now, one, one understanding that you should have is that your teeth are connected to blood vessels which are connected also with nerves. Those teeth with nerves and blood vessels are connected to the rest of the whole circulatory system and the whole nervous system. So let's be clear that if and when a tooth has a cavity, and let's say that cavity is because there's an infection, maybe the cavity did not occur because of sugar uh, from, from your diet. Maybe it did not occur because you weren't brushing enough or flossing enough or getting enough dental cleanings. Maybe, just maybe, you ate something that had a little fungus on it, you didn't see it, maybe there was a peach fuzz, like on a peach or on a grape or on a strawberry, you didn't realize that was fungus. And that fungus can actually get into the gums, it can get into a tooth, like in a little crack or crevice in between a couple of teeth, and it can make the teeth, over time, start to decay. And then the dentist calls that a cavity. Now, understand that cavity, when that infection whether it's a fungus, or whether there's a bacteria that somehow got into your mouth, or whether a parasite somehow got into your mouth from eating something, it went into your mouth, and it decides to call the tooth and or the gums a home. Those infections can actually get through enough of the tooth to where it actually gets onto the nerve root, and it can get into the blood vessel that's connected to the tooth. It can also actually get into your body through the gums, we're actually just swallowing some of that infection. It can actually, you can swallow it and it can get into your stomach and get into your intestines. Once it gets into the intestines and it can actually penetrate through the intestinal lining and get into a blood vessel, it can travel anywhere, whether it's to your thyroid gland or your bone marrow or uh, your brain or your eye, it can go anywhere. So let's understand something, that whenever there is a, a dental infection, there can be a body infection, where the infection in the mouth started first and it actually traveled to the body. So it was secondary in the body because it was first in the mouth. It can actually go the other way too. It can, the infection can actually, you might have swallowed some food that you didn't realize the beef that you ate even if it was back when you were a little kid and now you're a vegetarian or a vegan. Maybe you're not a vegetarian or vegan, but I just want to cover both sides of this because people say, well, I'm a vegan now, so there's no way because I don't eat meat anymore. Well, what if you had eaten that meat back when you were a teenager or you were a kid and you ate that food and it had an infection in it and you, your parents always made it well done, the beef or the hamburger or the chicken on the grill or in the stove or in the oven. But what you may not realize is that some of these infections, some of these critters are so resilient, they're so amazing at living in, they have the ability to live in such high temperatures, some in very low temperatures, very low temperatures, where a human can't survive. Some of these infections can survive. So let's say that the meat was well done and you ate that and it got into your stomach and maybe your stomach acid was not strong enough for you to dissolve, for you to disinfect the food. And that infection goes not from your tooth to the body, but it can actually go into the stomach. And let's say it finds a way to get into the stomach tissues. And it can actually go through the stomach wall into a blood vessel that's connected to your stomach. And this can happen for any organ, whether it's a fungus or, an, or bacteria parasite in the liver, or in your intestines, or in your kidney, pancreas, spleen, the infection can actually go right back up, let's say back to this story about the stomach, the scenario with the stomach, it goes right back up through the blood vessel and or the nerve that's connected from the stomach to a tooth. And that can go through the root of the tooth into the tooth 
and call that tooth a home and start to decay that tooth, that tooth now can die over time because of the terrible infection, whether it takes a year, whether it takes 20 years for that, to, for that end result for that tooth to take place. And that infection can now be traveling from the stomach to the tooth, makes the tooth infected, and that infection can actually travel through the blood vessel and go and find another home. Maybe it goes through a heart valve, maybe it goes through the heart muscle, maybe it goes through one of the ventricles of your heart. Maybe it goes from that tooth through a blood vessel and it goes right up a nerve here up to the brain. And that infection can travel up to your brain and cause neurological malfunctions. These are all possibilities. You know, the Germans back in the 50s on, they started um, studying how the teeth are connected to the body. They studied how root canals, root canals were uh, in, in, in very commonly, they were able to trace root canals to cancer. Crowned, also known as capped teeth, can have infections under them that can travel through the saliva going down to an organ and make the organ infected and make the organ sick. So whenever there is an infection in a tooth that can travel to the organ and or the organ to the tooth, that, that we have to be able to find that. Now there's something else that can happen. I'm gonna share with you in a few minutes results of a patient examination, a dental exam that I did recently in my clinic. But something else that I'm gonna share with you is that the teeth can actually be a sponge. Your teeth have microtubules. These are little caves. These are little tunnels inside the teeth. And they have little, like caves, they have little holes inside your teeth, like a sponge has. So just like your bone marrow is a sponge, your teeth become like a sponge. So let's say you had a Novocaine injected into your gums, into the root of the tooth, to numb that tooth because they had to do some kind of surgical procedure or a cavity filling, and you were in such pain that they numbed the tooth in the dental chair. The Novocaine can be left over. 90% of it will leave the body, but 10% of that Novocaine material, that substance, whatever kind of numbing agent, local anesthetic material, can stay in the tooth. The tooth can absorb that. The tooth can absorb x-ray radiation. The tooth can be a home for x-ray radiation from dental x-rays or other x-rays on the body. And it can be a, a, a reservoir, a home for the local anesthetic. And let's just say that that tooth is connected to your thyroid gland. That tooth can now degrade the function of the thyroid gland. How? Because the chemical can be transferred from the tooth to the thyroid and back and forth. It becomes like a two-way street. It's like watching ants leave an anthill. They go out and find food. There are some ants going from the anthill out to the food and some that are coming back. So it becomes a two-way street. That takes place in mouths of all the patients that I get to examine in my clinic. And my clinic is filled with people with chronic ailments, whether it's Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or heart disease or diabetes, thyroid disease, Lyme disease, all different migraine headaches. So I'm gonna share with you, now that we've, we've discussed some of the, the, the basic understanding of how the teeth and the body are connected, and, and you can look this up. If you just go online, and I'll put this on the bottom of the screen or the side of the screen here, and you're gonna look up the Meridian Dental Chart. Every tooth, is connected to various tissues in your body. One tooth, and you can click on a tooth on that chart and see which organs and glands it's connected to. So one tooth could be connected to the, a heart valve and the thyroid and the parathyroid and a blood vessel to the kidney. Another tooth may be connected to uh, the mitral valve or the, or the left ventricle of the heart and part of the brain and the pineal gland and the uh, uh, hypothalamus gland. And another blood vessel could be connected to the elbow of your left arm, to your pinky finger, and to your left eyeball. Really, all your teeth are connected that way to all parts of the body. So when a tooth is diseased, the body part's diseased. When a body part is diseased by infection, by toxins, those infections and toxins can float through a blood vessel and or a nerve and go right up to a tooth and make the tooth a home and make the tooth diseased. So examining a patient, uh, this female, she's middle-aged, and she comes in because she, she has had, even though she's getting results with me, with relief of chronic fatigue, 60% relief, and, uh, and insomnia is, is so much better. Uh, she can sleep through the night, most nights of the week right now, and there's been other improvements uh, for her function. 
So we finally get into doing, on our third visit, a dental examination. And in this dental examination, here is what I found. I found that she has, without bleeding gums, without sensitivity to the gums, no hot or cold sensitivity to her gums or her teeth, I found that her gums have bacteria infection, parasitic infection, and fungal infection. That does not show up on a regular dental x-ray or dental examination. There was no pus or, 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 or some bugs crawling around. There was no pus coming out of the teeth, out of the gums, excuse me. I also found, in addition to those infections in the gums, that the stomach, the thyroid, the adrenal gland, and the parathyroid have bacterial infection, and they are reflexing or connected up to the gum tissue in the whole mouth. I found that she's got um, in the gums and the crown tooth that they are reflexing to the heart muscle, the wisdom tooth, where she's got one tooth. Maybe she'll let me share the image I took pictures of of, of her uh, teeth. Uh, maybe she'll let me show those one day. But the wisdom tooth, there is a terrible infected, the tooth looks a grayish, blackish appearance. That is connected to the heart. Now, when we're going down around the teeth, I'm, I have a unique ability to test a tooth, the pulp of the tooth, the root of the tooth, in addition to the gums and the jawbone, and I'm able to find what types of toxins and infections exist in those teeth. Some of her teeth, one, two, three, four of the teeth out of all of her teeth that I tested on the top and the bottom, four of those teeth had x-ray radiation uh, absorbed into those teeth. We're going to make remedies, eventually make remedies to get the radiation out of those teeth. There is a way in understanding that like cures like. You can use a copy of the exact substance or the exact material or the exact uh, 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 radiation substance and actually cancel that out of a certain tissue. She had Novocaine uh, remnant, uh, residues in one of those tissues. She has uh, dental plastics, these, these white fillings, sometimes those are not okay. Sometimes the white plastics, uh, materials that they use, can actually cause other hormonal imbalances in the body. They are known to be estrogenic, estrogen-producing chemicals in these white, some of these white uh, uh, materials. I found Lyme infection between two teeth in her mouth. Nowhere else in the mouth did I find that Lyme, but I found it between two teeth. I also found on the right side here, mineral uh, deficiencies in a tooth, and I found food additives and food preservatives in one of her other teeth. Those food additives and preservatives found a way to get up there, whether it was from what she chewed or drank or whether it was one from an organ that went back up to the tooth. Either way, but it's there. I also found under uh, two of her crown teeth, two of the three crowns that still exist in her mouth, Mercury and Lyme infection, excuse me, I found Lyme somewhere else, sorry for that. I found Mercury and Lyme underneath the crown, and you could see other images that I put up on my Facebook page and I, I put on certain places on the internet, where a tooth that's crowned that looks perfect, porcelain crown, underneath the crown when it comes off, they see a mercury filling under there. I'm able to find that before the crown comes off the tooth. So the other crown tooth, one of the uh, three crown teeth, I found that she has mercury and candida infection underneath that crown. So for those of you who are trying to fight candida or eliminate candida by following a candida-free diet, for, which is a good step, for those of you who are trying to remove uh, Lyme uh, from the body or other kinds of infections, you can have a crown with an infection living underneath the crown and it looks like a perfect tooth and the dentist can't see under that because the crown is a metal piece if it's not a porcelain only crown, most crowns have a metal jacket with a porcelain jacket over it. So that metal jacket, when it sits over the tooth, the dentist cannot see, cannot see the pulp of the tooth underneath the crown. You cannot see a tooth through a metal crown on a dental x-ray. And when a dentist goes in there with their tools and picks around, they cannot tell what is under the crown, unless they've learned some other unique skills like what I have learned to be able to, to definitively, definitely determine is it this infection or that infection, this toxin or that infection under the tooth. So I wanted to bring this to light and help you understand that teeth can be causing part of your disease in your body. They can be causing kidney failure. They can be causing part of your diabetic situation, your heart disease, your neurological disease, your thyroid disease, your multiple sclerosis, lupus, 
rheumatoid arthritis. There's an article that I've posted elsewhere on the internet where, and possibly even here on YouTube, where they found gum infections without bleeding in the gums, parasitic infections in the gums, causing rheumatoid arthritis nodules in the fingers. Okay, I wanted to share this information with you. I hope that uh, this all makes sense to you and uh, it came across pretty clearly here. Uh, please watch other videos that I have on my YouTube channel. Go to my Facebook page. I'll put these addresses on the screen here uh, so that you can see even under the screen. And um, I look forward to helping you and really helping you get to the root of your, your causes of your disease because if you don't rid the cause of your disease, you can't reverse the disease. And if and when there are some hidden causes, even if a root canal was pulled because it really went bad, or even when a crown is replaced or the mercury fillings are removed, you still have to go to somebody to get the mercury residue removed. You still have to find out the trauma site to the tooth when the tooth is extracted. You still have to find out if there's infection still living in the jawbone or the gums or the ligament that was connected to a removed tooth or a tooth that went bad and fell out. You have to find all these things. That is part of what I offer in my practice for people. Okay? Find it, elegantly remove it. All toxins and infections and causes of your disease. Uh, click the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. Share this video with one person who has an ailment who is not getting relief with all the natural or medical practices that they're following. And I am here to help. And uh, you can call uh, uh, to make an appointment in my practice, in my clinic here in South Florida. The phone number is 954-370-3100. And I look forward to helping you. Thanks again.